Defense correspondent Benjamin Hall, who reported in Ukraine during the early days of the war. As you no doubt remember, he was gravely wounded by a Russian attack that tragically took the lives of beloved Fox cameraman Pierre Shchevsky and young Ukrainian producer Sasha Kushnova. Ben bravely shared his story in this Fox documentary that was that is titled Sacrifice and Survival. We thought we were going five minutes around the corner to film these uh, abandoned villages. There was a bombed out gas station, filmed that for a little bit. Said, so, you want to go see a little bit further? And so we went a little bit further. <laughs> Interviewed some Ukrainian soldiers who were there. The sounds of shelling is constant just outside here in Kyiv. We were filming outside one building that had been hit badly. We heard shelling in the background. Ben, welcome. Uh, good to have you with us. Obviously, um, your experience in Ukraine changed your life dramatically. Um, you have been an incredibly inspirational source for so many of us. And good to see you back uh, as a war correspondent in Tel Aviv in recent weeks. So thank you for being here, Ben. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So what would you say, you know, I spent some time yesterday going back and looking at some of the work that was done in the early days, and including looking at this uh, 20 Days in Mariupol documentary, which is up for an Academy Award this year, and our work, and the things that were shot when you were there as well. And, I, you know, one of the stunning images was a family that was shot dead as they were running with their roller suitcases through the street. It, the, the brutality of this invasion, I think, gets lost over the course of a couple of years. So how do you see where we are now? And what would you say to the American people about the importance of this? Or is it time for them to, to move on? You're right. It does get lost. And I remember the scenes of that maternity hospital being bombed yes. and the pregnant lady being carried across the courtyard. Uh, she lost her baby. The children were killed in that. And I, and I know that many people watch the news and it feels far away and they're not sure. It, some people doubt how much it's happening. Well, it is happening. And that's why we send our correspondents out there to tell the story is to do it. But what's fascinating about wars is they come in in different phases. And this war happened as well. Right at the beginning, we thought that Russia was going to capture the whole country. They were surrounding Kyiv and it felt they were going to win. And then Ukraine pushed them back to the east. But what has happened in the last few months is that has reversed again. And we find ourselves in a position right now where the Russians are back on the offensive. The Ukrainians are running out of everything they need. They are afraid that if they don't get anything in the next few months that the Russians will continue taking ground. You mentioned the city of Avdikta that they've taken. Uh, this could well bode for the future. And so we say it many times, but it is a critical moment right now um, that if Ukraine doesn't get the weapons that it needs, um, that Russia will continue to win. And sadly, it does come down to weapons. We talk about sanctions all the time, but the Ukrainians I've spoken to today say 500 sanctions against some bank managers and against stopping a couple of the sanctions uh, exports getting out is, is doing nothing. In fact, Putin is looking braver than ever. He was flying in a, a, a nuclear uh, plane earlier yesterday, you know, really showing that he is on the offensive right now. And that's how it feels. The death of Navalny shows the same. He feels on the offensive. And he's looking at this right now and he's seeing not a short war, he's seeing a long war. He can get as many soldiers as he needs. He can get a few hundred more thousand if he needs them. And he's turned the Russian economy into a war economy. So they can get more weapons, they can get more soldiers. The Ukrainians don't have that option right now. And we're two years in at the moment. Um, and that just sounds like an anniversary. But you speak to people in Ukraine and day in, day out, they are living in this war and it does continue. Yeah. So, um, look, it's sad that we've reached it. It's sad that we've gone back to where to where we were. Yeah, you know, um, so obviously Zelensky in his interview with Brett talked about the fact that they're running low on ammunition, that they need better technology. But he also pointed out the gains that they have made in the Black Sea in terms of taking out a lot of the Russian warships. And he, and he, he pointed to that as a sign of, of progress. Now, you also see, as you just pointed out, what happened with Avdivka, the, the city that they have just taken. But we also hear that, that their army, that the Russian army, has taken such severe hits that the professionals were taken out in year one, Ben. How strong is the Russian military? How long can they really sustain this, in your opinion? 
Well, they've actually, they, they've shifted in a sense. At the beginning, they had some of their best soldiers up front. And you remember some of the Wagner fighters and some of those great private military groups that they had who were great fighters, the Spetsnaz fighters. They were up at the front. But what Russia has started to do, it's reverted to just manpower. And it does send relatively untrained soldiers up to the front and it just pushes them forward. So they've learned not to risk their well-trained soldiers anymore. They've learned to push forward um, the convicts, the people who they've taken from the vast corners of Russia. And yes, Zelensky talks about the successes in the Black Sea. He told me about that when I interviewed him as well. But that is sadly what he goes back to whenever he's questioned on the advances that are being made. Yes, it is, it is progress and it's good. But the battle here is really in, on land. And the, in that sense, they're not winning. And so I listened to Brett's interview with Zelensky and it did seem as if he's saying the same things. And he's been saying the same things for quite a few months right now. And there's been no real progress. So um, they're changing the top general. They are getting rid of people because of corruption. So there's domestic issues in Ukraine they have to deal with as well. So you know, there's a lot they're dealing with, and it's not a good time for them unless they get more support. We'll continue to cover it uh, with your help, Ben. Thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.